Getting that first developer job is harder than ever. Because of the recession, employers are looking to hire only the best developers, developers that can hit the ground running. This is extremely annoying for me and for you because we need to rethink our entire strategy. What used to work last year, it's out. Bad looking portfolios, mediocre skills or like good enough skills and praying for luck are not anymore acceptable. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a strategy that you can incorporate into your learning process which is gonna help you to massively increase your chances of getting that first developer job. In my opinion, it's foolproof. I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm implementing it with my clients and you can steal it from this video and implement it into your own journey. So let's get started. Before we discuss this new strategy, we need to discuss what used to work before, what used to work last year. People used to make average portfolios, average websites, you know, a website that looks like it has been made in like 2002, you know, a bad design, slapping a few, you know, applications like the calculator, the to-do app, the weather app and whatnot, and then praying for luck. That used to work last year and it was pretty decent. With enough applications, you were able to land interviews. And if you're funny, if you're a charismatic person, you were able to land that first developer job, okay? Because people honestly are looking to pay less right? They are looking to hire some senior developer and then they see you, Jimmy, you are funny, you have some skills and they are willing to pay, you know, to train you, to give you some time to get you on board and then whatnot. But things are not as pink anymore, okay? And this is very annoying for me because my program used to take eight to nine months to get someone out of the door, but now I have to add another four months to my program where I need to implement this new strategy that I'm about to show you in this video, okay? So why the old way is out? Well, because of these budget cuts and because people are, you know, firing and, and people have like hiring freezes or not people, but businesses have hiring freezes and whatnot. Everyone is looking for that unicorn developer, that unicorn developer that can come in and do the work without training, without any kind of support. This is what people are expecting right now, okay? So they are looking to maximize the output that they can get from a developer. So if they have 100K and they wanna hire one developer, they wanna make sure that this developer that will cost them 100K will deliver $150,000 worth of value, okay? So they wanna squeeze more from less, okay? So with this new mindset, we cannot approach getting that first developer job with what used to work in the past because if you are only able to make to-do apps, if you are only able to make weather apps and whatnot, people will not be confident that you can come in and work in a team. So here's the new way, the new strategy that I'm using and the new strategy that you should be using, in my opinion, from now on, if you wanna get hired in 2023 and beyond. The best thing to do, in my opinion, is to create a product, a real world application. So now you'd be asking yourself like, how do I come up with this idea? Because I've been watching so many YouTube videos, maybe even mine, and you are still wondering, how can I create this application? How can I get this idea and convert it into a product which will help me get that first developer job. So here's how you do it. You need to find problem because ideas are just solutions applied to a problem. But if you are looking for ideas and you are not looking for problems, then you will never find the idea, right? So always think about what do you hate about your life that can be solved with an app? What is annoying? What is someone that is complaining about that you can create an application and solve that problem for someone? And then the problem here is that people have these high expectations that this problem that they need to solve has to be extraordinary, right? It doesn't have to be extraordinary, but it has to be annoying, right? And I'm gonna give you a few examples in a bit and I'll show you exactly how it works. But let's discuss how the brainstorming works for finding this new app idea. Well, you need to sit down first for like 10 minutes. Like it's honestly that simple. Sit down for 10 minutes and literally brainstorm the most bullshit ideas that you think would solve some sort of problem that you might have. Like you need to let your imagination flow. Imagine you turn on the tap. The first half of liter of water is gonna be disgusting probably. You see some mud in there, what, what, uh, but then after a while you start to see clear water and your imagination works in the same way. The first, you know, five ideas will be absolutely terrible, but then your mind will start to kick into gear 
and then you actually come up with some interesting stuff, right? So when you start to come up with that, with those interesting ideas, what you do is you double down. So once you have that first batch of 10 ideas, you force yourself to sit down for another 10 minutes and you have to force yourself to come up with 10 more ideas. And the reason why I'm saying this is because the first 10 will be relatively easy, right? But then after those 10, you need to actually start to dig deeper into your brain and to figure out what else can I do, right? Because we need to force our brain to come up with our solu with solutions. You and most people and I, we are underestimating how clever and smart we are. Our mind is always solution oriented, right? Every single time there is a problem, your mind can find a solution. And it's very likely that the problems that you'll find are extremely common and a bunch of people might have those problems and then you can build an idea around it, right? Do not underestimate how smart you are. You are extremely smart and then you can get your brain into gear and then you can find ideas that you can create, okay? So once you have this basic idea, what you do, you start building an MVP. This is gonna take maybe one or two days. For example, when I had an idea, it took me 20 minutes to come up with an MVP. An MVP doesn't need to be like stellar. It doesn't need to be ready to sell to someone. It has to be the most basic thing that just works. When you find that thing that just works, what you do, you start creating it. You can use React, some Redux, some React Router, and you just get something done, get something out of the way. As you are building this thing, as you are creating this main skeleton, this main idea, what you do is you start to have other ideas for this main thing, right? So then you start writing down, you know, extra features that you can implement, like some sort of gathering metrics or like registering users or creating different types of users for your application or creating teams, whatever it might be. Start writing down, get a Trello board up and running and start writing down all these ideas that you might have about your app. And whenever you write down that idea, what I would suggest you to do is to write a description. Talk about what that idea is about. How it is that supposed to work? Because trust me, you will forget about it, okay? So write your idea and then double down. Use your imagination. I know you can actually do this. Okay? Now, once you have this main idea fleshed out, you know exactly what features you wanna build. The next step, which is extremely important, and a bunch of you will skip it, is to go ahead and hire a designer. A designer is gonna cost you roughly 1,000 bucks, and this designer will actually get your idea and make something beautiful out of it, right? Because an idea with a shitty packaging is not an idea worth exploring. Most people judge books by their cover, right? You'll never buy a book that has a bad cover only if it has like amazing reviews and someone recommended it to you. But honestly, we are just going to the library and then we are picking up a book that has a nice cover. So with your idea, you have to package it in a nice way. And in this way, whenever a recruiter is gonna see it, they'll be like, whoa, this is actually a legit company. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain to you how that works in a sec. But they'll be like, oh, this works, this looks legit. And they will not even <laughs> sign up to your app. They will not even uh, log in, they will not do anything, but they'll just see that it looks good and they will just trust that that is a real company, right? That's one thing, that's one advantage. The second advantage is the fact that because it looks so good, you actually want to build it and you actually want to improve it. So it's gonna be interesting and it's gonna be fun for you to create this thing. So just think about it that in this way and just trust me, you need to pay a designer maybe have a budget of 500 to 1000 bucks where you can actually get something proper out of this thing. And the next thing is to buy a domain, right? Do not use Heroku or Versal or Netlify. Don't use any of those bullshit, you know, uh, domains. Buy a real domain because we wanna make this app look legit, right? So come up with a name for your app, slap a logo on it, go on Fiverr and get someone to do a logo for you. And buy this domain, it's gonna cost you maybe 10, 20 bucks right nothing more than that because you will put on your resume that you worked at x company however you're gonna call your company right you say i worked at this company they will click on that company they'll see that it's a real url the thing looks legit 
and they will just believe you straight away, okay? So that's how we hijack the system in 2023. And in this way, you don't need to fight for the scraps for a junior developer job. In fact, you can also apply to mid-level or even senior position because in your resume, you can say that you worked at that company for two years. So you are buying yourself time. This whole app, it's like the best investment that you can make in yourself. Trust me, there is no reason to apply for hundreds and hundreds of jobs. If you have a legit app, a legit resume, getting that first developer job is gonna be a walk in the park. You'll be getting a bunch of interviews and then in those interviews, what you do, you practice. You'll probably fail like 10 or 20 of them. You'll feel discouraged, but hey, that's part of the game. Like Messi played in three World Cups and he only won the last one, 12 years. So you can also go through 20 interviews and you can also fail 20 interviews. It's not a big deal, okay? So you go through those interviews, you feel like an imposter for the first five, but then you start to get the hang of how they go, right? You start to get experience with interviewing, not only with building apps, because interviewing is a totally different skill than building apps. And most people don't understand that the momentum from building apps is not transferring to the momentum of interviewing. So you start from scratch. Everything that you've learned in, about building apps is gonna go away to the trash and then you have to start again by learning how to interview. And that's how this process works. Now, there are a few more things that you need to take in consideration as you are building this new portfolio project, which is very important. You need to build it in a team. One of the most important things about being a developer in this modern era is that we are not lone wolves. We are working with other people, right? We are working with other developers, with designers, with project managers, product owners, scrum masters, with all these people. Obviously, you won't have access to product owners and project managers and whatnot, but you have access to other developers. So there are many communities out there. You can even join my community, it's on school. There should be a link in the description of this video. And when you are ready, you can create a team of three developers, right? You'll create a team of three developers and you will be building this application. And this way you learn how to use Git and GitHub properly. You learn how to manage your project. You learn all these things that you need to know as a developer, otherwise, nobody will hire you. This is one of the reasons why people don't hire junior developers because they don't know how to estimate, for example, the task. They don't know how to work with Git properly. They don't understand how to work in a team. So if you teach yourself this stuff right now, you'll absolutely be crushing it. Now, let me give you an example of an app that I wanted to build for myself, right? I'm actually going to build this app with my students, right? So this app is for YouTubers. YouTubers have many problems. I have many issues, right, as a YouTuber. One of the issues that I have is that I want to figure out how my titles and thumbnails would look like on the main page of YouTube, right? So people can click on my videos and watch my stuff and become my client and whatnot, right? The problem that I have is that there are some apps out there, but I have to upload one picture and one title at a time. And it's very annoying. But what if I have five titles and I upload five thumbnails and I'm going to get all the possible permutations between those titles and, and thumbnails. And then I can also see how they would look on the YouTube homepage. And in this way, I can figure out which one is the best, what's the best title, what's the best thumbnail. So that's one of the features that I want to build in this. Another one would be collecting ideas for the future. So I can look at my competitors, I can see, you know, what videos they're making, what titles, what thumbnails, and I can start to leave notes on each and every single one of their videos and I can say, why am I interested in this? Why is this video making so many views? What's so interesting about this thumbnail? What makes me click? What is the intention from this video? What is the idea from this video that made the creator create this thumbnail and title, right? So this is one of the ideas that I have. I have many ideas because I have many issues, right? Uh, and I always come up with, it, with these ideas. Ideas are not so so difficult to get but what's difficult is getting them done okay and if you need help getting this process done right if you want to do it in an efficient way and in a fast way what you can do is you can apply for my mentorship uh the link is in the description if you find any spots available because for the past month or so it was quite uh busy but if you are interested in that and you want to do this process in a very very quick way and in an efficient way where you don't have to think about the ideas you don't have to pay for the design and you don't have to do all that stuff everything is going to be delivered to you straight away you can be part of my mentorship program all this stuff is going to be given to you and many more other things 
I'm gonna explain to you how that works in our call. Uh, so yeah, if you are interested in that, link in the description. I hope this video helped you. If you have any comments, let me know what you think about this idea. Will it work for you? Let me know. Peace.